We're doing a panel on what is the return on investment of a hug from your mother, <laughs> AKA social media. So I'm gonna kick this off here by asking Rick Dragon. Rick, can you actually measure the return? I mean, what, what's the quality of a hug or a kiss? How do you measure something social like that? Well, it, it's true, it is difficult. And that is one of the, the difficulties that I often say that you know, a social media engagement is a lot like a hug. And how do you measure the value of one hug versus another? Uh, well, you can. You can say, well, on a scale of 110, 1 to 10, that hug really, really sucked. That hug was fabulous, right? Yeah. So it's, it's murky. It's not an exact science, but you can get some, some general metrics there. Well, I, I think there's platforms that are trying to do that. I know we have a clout expert here, Sam Fiorella. It's a clout expert. <laughs> and so, Sam, I mean, clout, clout's the way to measure this social media. If you're going to talk to a corporation, you're going to tell them to use clout, right? Uh, well, the minute, uh, yes, usually when um, we're talking to the larger corporations, especially, and clout uh, ability to measure influence is, is uh, spoken or is introduced, uh, we usually are <clears throat> bullshit. Um, <laughs> and then we'll, and we'll move on to something that's actually real and tangible and accurate. Um, so we obviously don't talk about clout. We move on to what is, uh, what is a, a metric and then how do metrics tie into actual measurement. So I think, you know, what is really bullshit is the fact that people think that social media cannot be measured or cannot be monetized. Um, uh, many of you have maybe heard me say before that, uh, you know, social media uh, is about profit. It has to be about profit because a business, after all, is here to make money. Without it, it can't exist. So what we usually tell the larger corporations um, is to look at all of your engagements Track, don't try and measure the, re the effectiveness of that tweet, that specific tweet. Uh, measure the metric. What, how, are you increasing? Are you decreasing? Are you making an impact? Are more people following you? But then measure those interactions. How do they impact the customer life cycle? Right. How do they impact the value of the customer over time? Maybe do A-B testing to say, you know, these types of engagements over three months, over six months, when you uh, take a look at the impact long term. That's how you show that ROI from I'm really disappointed. <laughs> I'm disappointed so disappointed in what? Because I thought we were going to have an argument, you and I. But I agree well, with Well, we you. can talk about that shirt. No. That, that <laughs> I mean, we, we, we can argue all day about that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I love it, but it sounds really complicated. Tom, is it even possible to measure, measure this shit, yes or no? Uh, it has to be, is, is the quick answer, because, uh, well, my job was for the last two years going to blue chip companies and uh, trying to sell them social media. And what each one of them said is, all right, well, sh you can sell it to me when you show me the, the return on investment because I need to go get that budget from my VP who doesn't know social media. He just wants to see numbers. Numbers, uh, we, we pulled numbers, out, we've been pulling numbers out of thin air since the, like the 20s and 30s. Well, like Nielsen or BBM, for yeah. example, how ridiculous is that? putting a box in, in a few people's homes to determine what, what TV shows are popular. Is that scientific? Not really, but it's what marketers need to go get the budget from, from up on high. So the great thing about social media is it generates so much data. Every like, every click, uh, through public APIs, you can get those numbers, and it makes for a lot more scientific reporting than, than what marketers are, are already used to using. So. You can and you have to, to use it to get more budget and ultimately to pay us more to, to execute. I like the pay us more part. <laughs> yeah, I like the pay us more part too. But isn't there a problem? I mean, Rick, you know, this stuff happens over time. So I, I hear you can't measure the tweet, but doesn't it take a really long time before you start to see any kind of impact back from social media? Well, well, it is true. And, and our difficulty that we found was that in the initial stages of a social campaign, there's a very large period of time where we're not yet able to measure necessarily the outcomes, the effectiveness. We have to measure the activities in the beginning. Gee, we are doing X, Y, and Z. And at this stage, in those initial stages, that's all you can measure. And based on experience, gee, we know that those activities will yield results. Well, I, I would just add, there are some scenarios where, where it can be a lot more instantaneous. Like the, the classic one is the call center scenario where uh, a brand might be spending a lot of money uh, running a call center to answer customer questions. And if social media starts to answer those questions relatively quickly, 
you can immediately see a drop in, in call yeah. center activity. I'm, I'm thinking more yeah. of like a brand uh, wait a minute, social though. campaign. Yeah, but, you know, I know Sam and I have talked about this on Biz Forum, Wednesday nights, 8 o'clock. <laughs> uh, you know, you've got... <laughs> airlines that suck at this, and yeah. yet they're still there on Twitter. Why don't you talk about that for a minute? Well, yeah, and, and I think that's one of the challenges with just pulling numbers and taking a look at it, uh, an isolated case. You know, uh, airlines is a great example. They're there, but are they actually doing more harm sometimes than good? Uh, because what they're doing is they're saying, oh, I'm sorry that you have that problem, call us. Oh, I'm sorry that that happened to you. Uh, maybe next time it'll be better, or we'll try and make it right for you. So what you're doing, you've created a paper trail across the internet of you acknowledging all your screw-ups. Right? So sometimes that could actually hurt you. Now, it's, you still have to do it. I understand that concept. But when you look at something in isolation, even the, you know, well, our calls have come down. Okay, well, that's one isolated impact. That could be a blip. You know what I mean? You cannot look at ROI based on a, a, a blip. You have to take a look at the overall impact on the, on the life cycle of a customer. But I think, you know, the, the call center is just one of them. And usually social media serves at least five different scenarios of return. There's the, the, the visibility. The fact that you're making your customer interactions visible to the public is a form of advertising too. It says we care and you know, this is what Gary Vaynerchuk writes about. Uh, but so at, at the same time as you're saving call center time, you're probably fulfilling five other advertising functions that typically have budget attributed to them. The trick would be to show how, how it all happens at once and, and how much money that represents using traditional means. The well, I mean, there, there's a cost saving factor to ROI. You know what I mean? It's not how much money I've made necessarily, but how much money have I saved yeah. in, in operating this way. But that still comes down to one thing, profit. There's only one measurement in a business, and that is profit. Whether it comes from increased sales or decreased uh, expenses, either way, as long as you can tie it eventually. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you're pulling out with just metrics again. And, it's and that's not where I would uh, bang this beer stein on the table and oh, say, okay, okay, it's on. Let's Sam, go. I, I disagree with you because it Why? can't just be about profit. Profit's a lagging indicator. We have to be measuring things like uh, customer satisfaction. We have to be measuring yeah. things like employee development. Uh, product development, all of these different things we need to measure. Well, no, I didn't say that you, you don't measure those things. You need to track them. But every one of those things that you just talked about is important as they are, and you need them to set KPIs for, you know, or benchmarks in your industry mm -hmm. or within your industry. Indicator. Eventually, every one of them impacts the bottom line of the organization. Why would you track it if it's not, if it's not to improve it? And why are you trying to improve it? To make more money to grow your business, no matter which way you spin at it, you have to be able to track every metric, every measurement down to profit. So it really, it, when you're talking about ROI, if you're not, not including the profit in that equation, you should definitely for a business include the profit, but it can't be the, the main only metric. There has to be a balance. Well, I don't know how you run your business, but I hope to make profit with mine. Oh, I hope to make a profit as well. Yeah, but you know, uh, big corporations uh, have, have down profit years and, and that's never meant that they've stopped advertising altogether, you know? Mm -hmm. So in, in, the, in the blue chip world, advertising happens as, as, a, as a reason, of course. So obviously they'll be a lot happier if you implement social media and profits go up, but uh, they're, they're, the, the correlation between putting out uh, TV ads and profits has always been shaky at best and yet millions are still getting spent uh, every minute out there, so. Yeah, but you know what, and I think that, you're right, you're 100% right, and I, as somebody in the marketing industry, I shouldn't be saying this, but if I was a CIO or a CEO, or even a CMO, uh, I'd be calling bullshit. I mean, I would, I would say, you know what, no, why? Why am I advertising something that I cannot quantify to my bottom line? And just because it's always been done doesn't mean that we should continue to do it, mm -hmm. right? I, I think that we have to start to draw the line. Well, the blue chips, of course, can afford to measure awareness can afford to measure uh, sentiment towards a brand. Smaller brands can't afford those types of measurements, but certainly on the large scale, if you're, if you're spending five million on Super Bowl, you can. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, even with small businesses though, there's a, a gazillion applications out there. Obviously I'm exaggerating when I say a gazillion, but uh, there's a lot of applications out there that allow for sentiment analysis that are free. Um, and you know, there, and there are more and more are coming every day. And sometimes, you know what, just some of the simpler tools and a little bit of, you know, what's between your ears, hopefully, you can get that sense. I, I think we're doing smaller businesses a disservice by saying that this is only something that larger businesses can afford. Uh, there's a lot of tools out there with a little bit of innovation, a little bit of thinking. You can still do it. Well, well to me, part of the, the, the difficulty in an ROI, a true ROI calculation yeah. for social media is the concept of, let's just say, if we were to map uh, the activities that we're doing to increased awareness. 
Well, f in order to get the differential, you have to know what the size of your overall market is. And what you were doing market. before social media, to right. that original benchmarking, right. yes. And so that can even be daunting for some yeah. regional businesses. Because it's hard doesn't mean we don't do it. I mean, it was hard to put a man on the moon, and yet we went through the effort and we put him there. Um, and now we have health and science benefits as a result. Exactly. And I'll just add that uh, one thing that has been made very easy for us is, is Facebook, Twitter, and other social networks completely opening up their APIs so that anybody can self-serve data, even if you're not logged into a brand. So we, yeah. in our model, we've taken over 10,000 brands right now and crunched all their numbers so that... Uh, you know, we don't have any perfect answers yet, but at least we know how brands compare to one another, and that's already a big step. Hmm. Well, I mean, comparative analysis is always a great thing. I mean, again, every, there's so many ways you can slice and dice how do you measure social media.